I believe we need more publicity. Mm -hmm. We probably need athletes who can communicate better. That would help a lot. But we need to get attention. If you look at the Los Angeles Times, they don't even cover track and field. Yeah. They used to be one of the best newspapers in the USA. That's when the sport began to get better and better. Mm -hmm. But then they quit covering track and field, then a lot of other magazines quit cover. If you don't have publicity from the newspapers and the magazines, you're not going to have a great sport. But because there's a lot of money <clears throat> from the sponsors to put on the world championships and more money to put on the Olympic Games, <clears throat> there's publicity and the athlete gets attention. Yeah. An athlete could set a world record in a small meet or in another meet yeah. and he gets some publicity. But if he sets a world record at the Olympic Games, he gets a lot of publicity. That makes him more valuable. That makes the sport more valuable. If the athletes can learn to communicate, or if the IAAF and the Olympic Committee could get more publicity for the sport, it would help it immensely because the sport is hurting. Yeah. yeah. As, no, as I well. train the athlete so that they can run the best that they can. Mm -hmm. That is my goal. I don't care if it's Olympic year, World Championship, year or there's no major, uh, there's no Olympics or world championships. Yeah. My purpose is to train that athlete so they can be the best that he can. Example, I had a young athlete come to me last year and out of, out of the university and the previous two years he had run 147 something. He was dedicated, he was focused. Last year he went to Europe in his first race, he took sixth place. Then he won four <clears throat> first places, four golds, mm -hmm. and three silvers. And he did very, very well. And he was consistent running at 145, and his best was 144.84. So my purpose was to get him to run the best that he could. Yeah. And he did, and I felt that that was a success. But he would not have been a success if he had not been disciplined. I told him you have to be in bed every night by 11 or 11.30. I want you to sleep eight, at least eight hours a night. Don't sleep over nine. Yeah. And so with these rules, he followed them. Anything I asked him to do in training, he did. He didn't question. He just did what I asked. And therefore, he made a big improvement. Yeah. Coming, I think his sophomore year in 146.8, then he ran 47.5, 147.0 something. And then last year he's down to 145, 144. That's a big drop. That's a big drop. And if he stays focused this year, he'll go through the 143s. And that'll put him in, should put him in the top 10 in the, the world. Yeah. And he may be in the top five if he runs fast enough. That's but he can't do it without focus. So my purpose is not the Olympic Games, mm -hmm. not the world champions. It's to make the athlete run the best that they can. And then there's a lot of extraneous factors such as sickness mm -hmm. or weather that play into the role. And so you have to be very careful with all of those and hope that the athlete doesn't get injured. I've had athletes step on a root on a tree and fall over and yeah. different things. So we have to be careful, but we have to deal with real life mm -hmm. and train that athlete to be the best that he can. If he's runs. 800 or 1500 and lower, we have to build up his anaerobic threshold. Mm -hmm. That means so he can run faster and hold that tempo. Yeah. And if he's a distance runner, we build up their aerobic threshold if he's a marathoner. Yeah. That's so he can run a long distance and continue to hold that tempo so the body will continue to function.